Our story takes place in Paris, in the second half of the 15th century. In front of the Cathedral of Notre Dame, curious villagers are attracted by an unexpected event. Never in my life have I seen a face so ugly before. It looks like someone sat on a cabbage. No one would ever nurse that horrible thing. It's so ugly. It looks like a little monkey. Yeah. Who would raise such an ugly child? A mother would have to be crazy to take care of such a little monster. He'll be more trouble than he's worth. They should put it out in the street so the dogs can play with it. It's a product of the devil, straight from Hades. This demon child should be destroyed. You're right. I'll start building a fire. I'll get some sticks. I'll... Oh, wait, wait, look. Don Frollo, the priest is coming. Oh! Oh, oh! oh. oh. Why does he have such a terribly troubled face? Oh, ah, oh, oh my! What does he want with that baby? I will raise you myself. Oh, oh, oh what's oh, going on? Oh. Look at that! Father Don Claude Frollo is a sorcerer! Looks like he's bringing it into the church! Formed little creature. I'll call you Quasimodo, which is Latin for almost. Look up there! It's the Archdeacon's room! I hear some very strange things go on up there! They say the priest is a sorcerer, and that he and that deformed beast of his have been up there scheming for years! They say the beast has a grotesque hump on his back, and that he came from the devil himself! I never liked the priest anyway, but now that he's got that little monster to do his bidding, I believe that he is even more dangerous than he ever was before! Quasimodo, have you finished your grammar exercises? Mm-hmm. Off to bed, then. The king's court is visiting tomorrow, so we must make sure that the cathedral is clean. Good night, Quasimodo. Good night, Don Frollo. Hello, my feathered friend. I brought you some food. You need to eat if you're going to get well again. Don't be frightened, you're safe here. Come, come, and eat. There you go. Good. Eat and get strong. Then you won't have to worry about the others attacking you. The only reason they hate you is because you look different, and people always fear what is different. You know, you're lucky that my master is the most intelligent man in the world. He knows all about medicine, art, mathematics. In fact, he's even written books on every subject you can think of. And it was by reading his books that I learned how to heal you. Good night, my friend. I'll see you in the morning. How beautiful Paris is from up here. It almost makes me forget that the villagers call me a monster. As far as I'm concerned, they don't exist. Notre Dame is my home, and Don Frollo is my family. I'm perfectly happy to stay in here. Hello, my tiny little friends. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten you. This will have to be enough for tonight. I'll try to bring some more tomorrow. Good night. It's time for bed. Tomorrow, the royal court is coming, so I must help my master make sure the cathedral is clean. I still say no. 
The holy book strictly forbids any woman, young or old, mistress or servant, from coming into the cloister. But that rule is nearly 300 years old. It's probably not even valid. No, it's still valid to me. Women are the instruments of Satan. They are here to make sure that we break our vows to the Almighty. If she comes, you will receive her, for I will not. Please, Don Frollo, you are the Archdeacon. You cannot insult the King. So it's true. All that sorcery you've been practicing has made you insane. The years pass, and Quasimodo continues to live closed off inside the French cathedral, only knowing the company of Don Frollo. As season by season, the Parisian white doves build their nests on the spires of Notre Dame. Quasimodo, you are 14 years old and it is time for you to earn a living. So how would you like to be in charge of ringing the cathedral bells? Oh, I would. I would love to ring the bells. Notre Dame is my home, and this way I'll never have to leave. And I'll ring all 15 of the cathedral bells, including my favorite, Grosse Marie. So tell me, when can I begin? Well, there's no time like the present, Quasimodo. How about starting right now? And so, Quasimodo passionately embraces his work and begins to ring the bells of Notre Dame. For him, it was a tremendous joy especially when he had the chance to ring Gross Marie, from which he would hang as if it were a giant swing. As time passes, the young Quasimodo quickly becomes enamored with his work and those enormous bells of Notre Dame. Every day he rejoices in the music of the bells as they shatter the lonely and silent days spent in the bell tower. Quasimodo? Quasimodo, <laughs> why don't you answer me? Quasimodo! What's wrong? Why are you looking so sad? Why are you crying? What's wrong with you? I can't hear anything. Oh my God, the bells have made you deaf. Everyone is going back to their houses, but I can no longer hear their voices or their laughter. Now the only thing I can hear are the bells ringing in my head over and over. The loudest bell of all is that of my beloved Grosse Marie. Who cares? I can still communicate with you, my bells, and Don Frollo. I would do anything for Don Frollo. He is my father, my friend, my master. The years pass. It is now the 6th of January, 1482. On this day, the people of Paris are holding a double celebration, Epiphany and the Feast of Fools. I am the god Zeus! You shut the stage! You look like a fool! I simply love this play. I haven't seen something this brilliant in years. And who exactly, may I ask, are you? I'm the writer, Pierre Gringoire, but you can call me genius. I can't watch this trash any longer. This is the worst play I've ever seen. He should be hung. She's right. This play is terrible. It makes no sense. The hero is a waterfall. Let's all go to the town square and elect the king of fools. King of fools. I am so not looking forward to the reviews tomorrow. We can do whatever we want today! Yes, that's right. Just don't do it in front of the cathedral. Get out of here, priest. You know that today is our day. If you try to ruin our festival, we'll beat you within an inch of your life. Get out of the way! Get out of here, you horrible little monster. It's bad enough that you ruin our ears with those awful bells every day. You don't have to ruin our holiday. Look how the little demon defends his sorcerer, a slave to his master's commands. And even though I'm a waterfall, I still have dreams. This play is so horrible. I can't believe I wrote it. Have faith. There are several interested spectators still mingling within the crowd. Everyone, everyone, come, come. Esmeralda is dancing. Let's go see Esmeralda. Hmm. They're off to see that gypsy. 
Esmeralda, who holds nothing sacred. Even the ground she dances on. That's a wonderful goat. Thank you. Her name is Dolly. She's a genius and she can count and spell. But now everyone wants to see the election of the King of Fools. That's a perfect place for the show. Set it up over there. Let the festivities begin. <laughs> So, Clopin, Beggar King, have you decided who is to be King of the Fools? Well, I'm afraid we haven't done that yet. So far, we haven't found a candidate who is funny or ugly enough for the title. Look over there! That guy, he's perfect! That's Quasimodo, the Hunchback Bell Ringer. You're right, Esmeralda! He would be the perfect candidate for King of Fools! Oh, Quasimodo! <laughs> I can hear the whistles, just like I can hear the bells. Ding dong, <laughs> ding dong. Keep her safe with your dong, ding dong, ding dong. Yes, ding dong. <laughs> Look out! Here comes that bothersome priest. Ugh. Quasimodo, go get that girl. I must free myself from the spell she's cast. Uh huh. Stop! I promise I won't hurt you. Please don't be afraid. Help me! Someone help me! Stop! Oh. Give me your hand. There you go. Thank you for saving me, my good nobleman. May I know your name? My name is Phoebus, and I am captain of the King's Archers. Phoebus? What a strange name. It's an ancient name for the sun. Well, it does suit you. Thank you, dear captain. Ah, farewell. Uh, wait, wait. And now what do we do with the bell ringer? King Clopin, look what we've brought you! He should be punished for not giving alms to the poor. I remember him. He wrote that terrible play that made no sense at all. I'm surprised he survived that performance, <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> Get him! The play was awful! <laughs> yes, I believe you're right, my friend. He deserves to die. Let's hang him. I beg you, please free me. I haven't done anything wrong. Wait a minute. Our law states that if a woman claims him as her husband, his life will be spared. Is there no woman here who will have him? No, he's too skinny. He's good for nothing. I don't even like his vest. I will take oh. him. Are you really sure, Esmeralda? Then pick up that pitcher and hand it to him. Hmm. You're very lucky, my friend. Now take the pitcher and throw it on the ground. I declare you man and wife for four years. 
Thank you so much for saving my life. But may I ask, why did you do it? Your play was terrible, but you didn't deserve to die for it. And I didn't want to see a man hang on the day that I've fallen in love. You mean you're in love with me? <laughs> no, no, no. You'd like that, wouldn't you? I've actually fallen in love with a man named after the sun. From me, you'll only get friendship, nothing more. And for my good deed, you will help me with my work. Water, water. Oh, please. Can't you see he's dying of thirst? Hey, what is she doing? That homeless gypsy is giving the beast water. Thank you so much for your kindness. What is she doing? What are you doing? Beat him, beat him. That gypsy girl ruined everything. They were going to let him go anyway in an hour. Now the beast will be able to go back and serve his priest, the sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Esmeralda will lead Dolly, the wise goat, in an amazing performance. Gringoire, what in heaven's name are you doing here? I'm helping my wife. I kind of got married a couple hours ago, but I must admit the woman is exceptional. talking about? Who did you marry? Tell me. Esmeralda. She saved me from being hanged at the court of miracles. What have you done, man? You can only offend God by touching that gypsy woman. I haven't touched her. Trust me, I've tried, but she won't have it. She only married me to save me. What are you doing, Gringware? Come over here and help me. Excuse me for now, Don Frollo, but my duty calls. And now I will present the wise goat that can both read and write. You will see how the goat picks the right cards to spell a word. However, since yesterday, this animal has had only one name in his head. Phoebus, a beautiful name that means sun. But this, this is witchcraft. Good afternoon, Phoebus, welcome. And a good afternoon to you, milady. I'll be with you in a moment. <clears throat> Phoebus, my groom-to-be, I heard that last night you saved a beautiful damsel from a horrible fate. Let's not exaggerate. The rumors that you heard were not exactly true. There was no real danger. And the beautiful damsel was just a gypsy girl in a bit of trouble. By chance, is the gypsy girl who just finished dancing the damsel from last night? Yes, that's her. She seems quite beautiful to me. If you don't want me to become jealous, I think you'll have to make everyone respect the king's ordinances, including her, and clear the square. Don't you agree? Now do your duty. Of course. I'll take care of it immediately, milady. Bye. Now, archers, clear the square immediately. No. Oh. Get out of here. Oh. 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 <laughs> Hello, Esmeralda. You're really ungrateful. Last night it seemed you couldn't get away from me fast enough, so now you've probably forgotten all about me, huh? I can't forget about you. Your name and face is carved into my heart. I must clear the square now, so you must go. Why don't you meet me this evening at the inn behind the market? I'd like that. Will you come? Perhaps. Until then, farewell, my son. <laughs> How could I have ever doubted you, my love? Thank you for coming, my beautiful damsel. <laughs> this is for you. Now go away. <laughs> 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 
Esmeralda! So that's where she's been. That's why I haven't seen or heard from her in over a month. Just tell me, is he still alive? You are accused of conspiring with the demon that took the form of a goat. Woman, in the deposition taken by the murdered captain on his deathbed, he declared that he encountered a dark demonic apparition before you met last night. This demon forced the victim to go to an unholy meeting with the accused. When the captain told him that he had no money, the demon gave him the money necessary to pay for the room. Gentlemen, this coin is from Hades. You have copies of the deposition, and you may study the declaration made by Captain Phoebus de Chantepour. Phoebus! My sweet Phoebus, have pity! Tell me if he's still alive! It's none of your business, but Captain Phoebus is dying. Are you happy? I must see him. If you gentlemen agree, we shall proceed with the questioning of the second defendant. If that demon that possesses this goat continues to resist all attempts to exorcise it and persists in its evil, we will hang it. We will hang it, or burn it, or burn it and hang it. Oh no, the tricks that we taught it to do for the crowd are going to be used against it. To prove that it's possessed. What time is it? Poor little goat. All is lost. The judge must have seen our show and knows that the goat will react to the tambourine. It's, it's true! It's the must be destroyed! It's the The gypsy must burn! There's your proof of sorcery. I've seen enough. The accusations are proved. This gypsy, with the help of demonic power, stabbed Phoebus, the captain of the King's Archers. Do you still deny it? I beg you, please. I must see him. Here we have the name written on the floor by a possessed goat. An officer lured to a meeting by an evil witch. Money transformed into dry leaves. The presence of the devil himself. Do you persist in denying your guilt, <clears throat> witch? Yes, of course I deny it. Then how do you explain the amount of evidence against you? It was the Archdeacon. That infernal priest, he persecutes me. Did you hear that? That all but confirms her guilt. Because of your unwillingness to testify, you will be questioned under torture. Oh no, she'll never survive torture. If only there was some way I could save Dolly. Don Frollo, being an expert in witchcraft and the laws of sorcery, we'd like you at the interrogation. Normally, it's the position of the church to stay out of such matters, but I'll make an exception. May we begin, Your Excellency. Oh, no! Woman, do you still deny the facts presented by the court? I'm innocent, Your Excellency. I'm in love with the captain. Very well. We'll begin with the boot. No, Your Excellency, I'm innocent. Proceed. <gasps> the pain! Okay. Okay, I'll confess to whatever you want. Do you confess to having cast spells, having relations with the devil, and stabbing yes, Phoebus? Yes, it's true. I confess everything. I did it. It's all true. I'm a witch. I knew it. Get her out of my sight. <laughs> Why does he hate me so much? On a day of the king's choosing, you will be transported to the front of Notre Dame, where you will be hanged for the crimes of witchcraft and the murder. Captain Chantepour, crimes you have committed and confessed to. May the Almighty have mercy on your soul. Here I am, Marie!
take this. Let her die, and I'll be free of her spell. Is it true they're going to hang a goat, too? Hang everything. That's my motto. Sanctuary! Sanctuary! The church is a place of peace! The military may not enter! All of you, leave now! Sanctuary for this woman! None of you may come in here! <sighs> There's no need to be afraid. I was just freeing you from the ropes that bound you. I know that my appearance frightens you. I know you may have heard stories about me, but I promise you they are not true. Believe me, I mean you no harm. You are safe here, Esmeralda, and if you want to, you can stay as long as you wish. No, I do not want you to touch me. I want you to stay away from me. No, please don't be afraid of me. I don't want you near me. Go away. All right, I'll go. But if you want me to come back, just blow on this whistle. Now I will leave. Thank you for giving me water. It was most kind of you. Do not leave the room, or they will surely kill you. You must know that if you die, I will die. Believe me. She must be dead by now. She had to die. She was a witch. A witch who cast a spell on me. I only ask now that I can find some peace. Esmeralda has found hers. I pray I can find mine as well. It's not possible. It must be a ghost. No! I cannot believe my eyes. You are still alive, Esmeralda. But how can this be? Was it the devil who freed you? Tell me the truth! Now I recognize you. You're the man that set me up that night. You're the one who stabbed Phoebus. Shut your mouth. That's right. I remember it perfectly. The man in the shadows was you. <laughs> oh, please, grant me forgiveness, Esmeralda. Why have you done this to me? Why have you ruined my life? What is it that you want from me? I want you. I love you. Don't touch me. Get away from me! Esmeralda has done nothing wrong. I want you to stay away from her. What's the matter with you? You said you'd help me. I will. You don't have to worry. <laughs> I want you to know the truth. It was Don Frodo who ordered me to catch you and bring you here. I know. I'm ashamed that I was so afraid of you. I'm sorry. I don't hear very well. We'll work it out like this. You sleep here. I still can't hear you. Dolly, I've offended him, and he's been so good and kind to me. It's not his fault that he's so scary to look at. It's just that when he sneaks up on me, I see his face, and I become so frightened. I hope one day I appreciate his good heart and nature. I am a hideous-looking man, so ugly. How could anyone ever love me? Oh, Gargoyle, why couldn't I have been made of stone like you? If I was made of stone, everyone would accept me as I was, and my heart would be unable to break. 
Did you call me Esmeralda? <laughs> I wanted to thank you for the dress. I feel reborn, and it seems my foot has healed as well. I'm sorry, I can't hear a word you're saying. I'm not saying much, you poor soul. The bells. It's all the fault of the bells. I can't hear a thing because of the bells. I'm so useless, and you are so beautiful. You must speak to me in gestures, or I could try to read your lips. Tell me, why did you save me? I tried to capture you, and the next day you helped me by giving me water. I could never repay you for that, though I'd like to try. Wait, don't go. Hmm? No, it's better if I go. I know that you're not fond of looking at me, so I'll go. Uh, but if uh, you need me, just use this whistle and I'll come. could he have for ringing the bells? Maybe the gypsy girl's driven him completely insane! Maybe he's celebrating because he saved her. Then again, maybe we should all be celebrating. Huh? Hmm. With the passage of days, Esmeralda again finds her natural calm. And with this calm comes hope. The hope that her love, Phoebus, is still alive. After everything around has collapsed, her love for the handsome captain lives on. But there is nothing more blind than passion, especially when it's the only reason one has to live. Often, the gypsy girl's thoughts are with Quasimodo, but she is unable to understand this strange friend that fate has given her. And sometimes she's hard on herself for not being grateful enough to him. Could Quasimodo be more important to her than she knows? The moment I saw Esmeralda again, my life ended. Her image torments me, and when I look out the window, she is there in front of me in flesh and blood. I can take it no longer. What do you think is the matter with Don Frollo? He hasn't left his room in days. He doesn't even come to Mass. Perhaps he's not feeling well, or maybe he cannot stand the idea that a gypsy witch, Esmeralda, was clever enough to find sanctuary in the chapel. Phoebus! Phoebus! <laughs> Phoebus, for heaven's sake, look up. Look at me. Uh, uh, he didn't even look up, but he must know I'm here. Maybe so. Would you like me to go down to the street and tell him about you? Oh, yes. Yes, please go tell him. Tell him to come see me immediately. Yes. Don't worry. I'll go now. party, wasn't it? And in a week, they're going to be married. Your wound doesn't bother you anymore, my love. Promise me that you'll never, ever fight a duel again. I promise, my love. I'm more than a little aware that a married man has great responsibilities to the woman he loves. <laughs> Luckily, it's too dark for Esmeralda to see them. Hey, wait, Captain! Hmm? Huh? Captain, there is someone who would like to speak with you. Go away, little man. Leave me in peace. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> no, there is someone up there waiting for you. Please, I'm speaking of Esmeralda. Oh! Good for her. And she better stay there if she values her life. You can't do this, Captain. Esmeralda is waiting for you. She loves you. But I guess you only have to be handsome to be loved. I guess that's it. I must make an excuse for the captain. The truth would only hurt her. What took you so long? Where's Phoebus? Uh, uh, 
I couldn't find him. I'm sorry. You should have waited for him. You should not have returned without Phoebus. I will do better next time. <laughs> you wish to see me, sire? Yes, Don Frollo. I wanted to talk to you about this blessed question of the right of asylum. Tis a noble and holy institution indeed, but we cannot allow criminals to think it is so easy to escape our justice. I imagine you are referring to the Gypsy, Your Majesty. Exactly, Don Frollo, exactly. I've just consulted with an expert, and I believe I found the perfect solution. You're telling me you found this expert here within the Bastille? Yes. He's been a guest in this establishment for over ten years now. Naturally, he will need your cooperation so that justice may triumph. Don't look at the face, dear. Look into the heart. Though someone may be handsome, their soul could be just monstrous. What a oh, spectacular day! I smell sausages! I smell sausages. I smell Why don't we get something Good to idea. eat? Uh, how are you doing, Gringoire? I'm just trying to survive, Don Frollo. Tell me, do you ever think about your wife, the Gypsy Woman? On occasion, but I hear she's protected in Notre Dame. But I do think of the goat often, though. It's strange that you don't think about her, considering that she did save your life. The time has come to repay her. I've been informed that by the King's order, some soldiers are going to come and arrest her. But I have no idea how I could help her, Don Frollo. Sorry, I don't know either, but you should do something. You're absolutely right. If they seize her, they will definitely hang her. And that means Dolly will have the same horrible fate as well. Thank you, Don Frollo. I'll do what I can. I think I know who can help. Quasimodo. Get out. Go! Uh, uh, asylum! I'm calling for the right of asylum! Uh, Save Esmeralda! Where's Esmeralda? Where's Esmeralda? Oh, so Where's the justice? Has anyone seen her? Has anyone Where seen is she? Where is Esmeralda? She must be saved! Save. Archdeacon, hear me! I, Clopin, Lord of the Beggars, hereby demand justice for Esmeralda! Although I can't hear them, I understand. Esmeralda is in danger. What can I do? Our sister Esmeralda has been wrongly condemned. She deserves refuge in your church, for if you do not protect her, we are prepared to take over Notre Dame and destroy yes. everything inside. Yes. Hear my words, Archdeacon, for I do not speak the language. If you do not comply, you will be faced with the wrath of the mob. What are you afraid of? There's no door that can hold us. Let us enter the church. Do you hear me? Come, my friends. One more push and the church is ours. One, two, three! Let's okay. go! Let's go! I love Let's go! 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 Don't stop! We're almost there! Esmeralda is right behind that door! Don't worry. They want to seize you, take you away, but I'll defend you. I'll squash them if I have to. No! No, they're my friends. They've come to free me. Go to your room and wait for me there. I'll take care of them. Come and get what you deserve! Let me Push! Push! She has the right to protection! <laughs>
That's it for me. I'm getting out of here. Justice must follow its own course. Esmeralda! <laughs> Quasimodo. Perhaps he's in the bell tower. Everything that has happened is your fault. Esmeralda was innocent and you knew it all along. You destroyed her and you want to destroy me too. Tyrant, I will kill you. No, no, Quasimodo, you're making a big mistake. You don't understand. The two people that I love most in life are dead. My master and my love are no more. What will happen to me now? I only have the bells. The hunchback must have gone crazy. Why would he possibly be ringing the bell at this hour? Is he following someone's orders? as fast as I can. Esmeralda needs help, and the guards might come back at any moment. My goodness, that's Zayra, the Beggar King's wife. Listen up, everyone. What they did was a crime, and we must make them pay for this! Is Esmeralda dead, Kringwar? Oh. No, Zera. She's unconscious. But we better get her to a safe place where we can take proper care of her. Oh. Oh. That's why Klopin sent us here. Come, I will take you to the Court of Miracles. Poor Esmeralda. We'll save you. Is she you. going to be all right? We must oh, hurry, Grimoire. We should wake up. Oh. Stop! I have an idea. Put her on my cart. It will be faster. Hurry! Come on! Come let's on. Go. Hurry! There's no time to lose. <laughs> Just a I'm moment, everyone. Just Just please, please, please. please. Come on! Please. We have to stop sounding like a bunch of old women. The time has come to take actions, my friends. As you have all heard by now, Esmeralda is dying. She has been taken to the Court of Miracles. Now, if we want justice, there's only one way to obtain it. We have to capture all the people who are involved in this wicked, wicked plot. Every last one of them. And take them back to our kingdom. It is the only place left where real justice has the last word. It is what Klopin, our king, wants us to do. Then let us waste no more time, my friends. This is the hour. We must act now. We must capture the judge who condemned her, the man who was wounded, and the priest who denied her full sanctuary in his cathedral. And of course, we will go after that cursed hunchback, Quasimodo. Break up into small groups, and we'll meet up again at King Clopin's after we have caught those criminals. Justice will be served. She doesn't look so Please wake up, Esmeralda. Oh. Oh. Ring Quark, how 
How's no, Esmeralda? It's nothing serious, King Clopin. She's still unconscious. We tried to bring her around, but we haven't had any luck. Don't worry. Take her up to the gypsies. They will take care of her, my friend. Be careful. Oh. Okay. Please tell me, where is the goat, Dolly? How touching that you're so concerned for the goat, Dolly. You needn't worry, for she's perfectly fine. Gringoire, I want you to tell me exactly what happened. Everything went according to plan. Don Frollo watched us from the cathedral, hoping that no one would notice anything amiss. Even Quasimodo had no idea that we were about to free Esmeralda. Then, the crowd turned nasty, throwing rocks and stones. The guards retreated. Luckily for us, I had already removed the noose from Esmeralda's neck. She was unconscious and I revealed myself to the crowd. The hook worked just fine, and I don't think the phony hanging caused Esmeralda too much pain. To be honest with you, when I saw her pass out just moments before I tightened the noose, I was almost relieved. I feared if she reacted, it might tip off the guards. Did you have any problems with the hangman? No, no problems whatsoever. All thanks to Don Frollo. He told the guard to let him in because he wanted to discuss the execution. When the man opened the door, your man burst in, grabbed him, and tied him up. It could not have been easier. <laughs> the poor man is probably still there waiting for someone to come set him free. I'd say it was a huge success. Come on, let's search. Follow me. Check all the rooms. If they are hidden in here, they won't escape us. Let's go this way. Isn't that Captain Phoebus and his fiancée? Sure is. That man tried to court Esmeralda, then accused her of wounding him. Let's go get him. Yes, but let's not forget we're also looking for Quasimodo and Don Frollo. King Clopin wants them at the Court of Miracles, dead or alive. Get your hands off me! How dare you! What do you want with me? Let me go, or I'll call the guards! Unhand me, or you will never get out of here alive! You would do better worrying less about us and more about yourself, Judge. We are guards as well. We are King Clopin's guards. Now, come on! You were looking for me? Yes, please come in, Clopin. What's wrong, Gypsy Queen? Grandmother, please tell us what you found out. Something strange is going on, Clopin. Something very strange indeed. But how is Esmeralda? Will she ever wake up? Yes, of course she will come out of it. Her body sustained no permanent damage. It's her mind that suffered. The terror of what was happening was too much for her. We must bring her back to the land of the living. I can do it, but not now. It has to be the right moment. All the people who tampered with the course of her destiny must be brought before her, because even their destiny has been distorted by the course of these events. Starting with Don Frollo, who, before he met Esmeralda, was a lonely and quiet man, completely dedicated to his studies. What I do not understand is why he, who hated magic so much, became the greatest sorcerer of all. I am quite certain that the poor man was not even aware of it. Obsessed by his love for Esmeralda, the sad priest cast many spells, some big, some small, but they all had an effect on Esmeralda's reality. Very well, Grandmother. We understand what you're saying, but we're more interested in saving Esmeralda's life. No, I'm sorry, little one. You don't understand. It isn't enough to just save poor Esmeralda's life. We also have to put things back the way they were before. The priest is dying somewhere along the banks of the Sim. We must not abandon him. The others are insignificant. A handsome, arrogant youth who has found a companion just like himself, thus breaking Esmeralda's heart. Uh huh? The old judge who serves only the rich and powerful. And finally, there's you, Clopin, the Joker, the Jester. Everyone's destiny is in your hands. You can fix things and give each one of these people what they deserve. And this young man, Gringoire, so in love Dolly, with the arts, at last! but above all, so attached to his goal. Hurry, Clopin, you must send your men to go and look for the priest right away. Right away, Gypsy Queen. <laughs> Come on, walk, and you can forget your horse. We have a nice surprise in store for you, you scoundrel. King Clopin will teach you better manners. How you treated oh. that innocent girl was inexcusable. Phoebus, what on earth is this man talking about? I have no idea. Well done, Phoebus. Not a word to your future wife about all this? 
Perhaps she would be interested to hear the truth, how you let the authorities condemn poor Esmeralda to death just so that she, your dear Fleur, wouldn't find out what happened. Correct me if I'm wrong, Phoebus. Oh. King Clopin, we have a present for you. We have to wait until the others get here, so stick him in the corner and don't take your eyes off him. I suggest you better rest while you still can, Judge. Search every part of the river. Keep looking. Bring the torches over here. Shine the light under the bridge. bundle of rags. Doesn't look like rags to me. Mm. Me neither. Well, well, what a nice surprise. The brave Captain Phoebus and his fiance. I do believe this should prove to be very satisfying. Do you still plead not guilty? Hmm? Esmeralda hasn't come to yet? No, and she won't yet. You must still be patient. That's Don Frollo. Oh. I'll take care of him. Quickly, take him to that house over there. I had no idea this freak would be so heavy. Have no fear. There is nothing seriously wrong with you. Soon we will do great things together. What's going on? The Gypsy Queen's been in there for hours. Huh. Clopin, the priest is better now. Why? Why have you saved my life? Oh, Don Frollo, you have already done so much for us. But I still need your infinite wisdom and your prayers. In short, I still need you to help me complete my mission. However, only Clopin has the power to carry out the next step. Do you have your scepter with you, King Clopin? Uh -huh. Then you may proceed to deal out justice as you see fit. <sighs> oh, what's happening? What is he doing? What's happening? What is going on? It's not time yet. <gasps> that poor man! Don't worry, he isn't dead. Quasimodo will be back on his feet in a short while, and everything else around here will return to normal very soon. But now, if you feel up to it, Esmeralda, you and I have a few things to take care of, if you don't mind. So come on. Why don't the rest of you go and get the judge? Well, uh, Judge, why don't you tell uh, us why you condemned Esmeralda? Yes, uh, tell us! Because she confessed. Not without being tortured, but that's only fair. The law must be respected. <laughs> but here at the Court of Miracles, I represent the law. And to ensure you learn from your mistakes, you'll stay here with me. So, by the powers vested in me, I, King Clopin, do sentence you to remain in my service for five years, to work with diligence and obedience. My decision is final. And I'd like to strongly suggest that you don't even think of trying to get away. You would never get beyond the confines of my court. Okay, untie him, men. He isn't going anywhere. Bring in the lovebirds. Oh, Phoebus! I realize that it won't be easy for me to convince you that this man is worthless, but I'll try. Captain, I wish you to answer a few questions, and I want to hear the truth and nothing but the truth. If you lie, you will die. Did you see the person who stabbed you that night? Yes. Then you know it wasn't Esmeralda, Captain. 
So why didn't you testify in her favor during the trial? Come on, tell us. I want to hear only the truth. If for a moment I think you are lying, my men will show you what it means to be stabbed to death. But it's obvious why I couldn't do it. The whole town knows I'm about to marry Fleur de Lis. If I had testified in favor of Esmeralda, our sordid little private affair would have become public knowledge. But you must have realized that they would condemn her to death. Are you a fool? I guess I am, but my life was in jeopardy, and I'm up to my ears in debt. I need Fleur de Lis. So he was only using me for my money, and he had the nerve to cheat on me with that gypsy! Now do you realize what sort of man you fell in love with, Esmeralda? <laughs> Fleur, please understand, I love you. You're the woman of my dreams. Well then, I believe I found the perfect punishment for you two. No! <gasps> oh. <gasps> Don't worry. I have no intention of having you killed, although after you hear this, you may wish I had done so. By the powers vested in me, I hereby decree that your physical appearance will forever mirror the image of your souls. Furthermore, our brave captain will become the new bell ringer of Notre Dame, a post that he will no doubt enjoy for the rest of his natural life. And beautiful Fleur will go with him, because two people who love each other so much should be together forever. Take them to Notre Dame, from which there's no escape, and may God have mercy on their souls. <laughs> no, Esmeralda, please don't cry. Not over a man like Phoebus. He got what he deserved. <laughs> I have not finished my task. Heed my words. Pierre Gringoire, my friend, please come over here. Huh? Hmm. Yes? Tell me what it is that you desire most, my friend. I'd like to become a great writer, find my muse, and never be separated from Dolly. <laughs> uh, well, I have no trouble fulfilling those wishes for you, my friend. May the heavens hear my words! Oh, did you I've see never that? Seen anything like this, this in my oh, life! She's so beautiful. beautiful! Turn around, Gringoire. Huh? Here, my love! <sighs> My darling Dolly! <sighs> I believe this is a suitable reward for overcoming your profound selfishness for the sake of your friendship with Esmeralda. Well, you've solved everything, Clopin. You punished the bad, rewarded Gringoire, and I'm safe and free even though my heart is broken. I'm sorry, but I think you're wrong. Think about it, Esmeralda. Haven't you forgotten somebody? Oh, Quasimodo! Oh, my poor friend! How could I have forgotten you? You're my real hero. Oh, that poor man. Isn't there anything that can be done? You treated me better than anyone else. Can't you do anything for him, King Clopin? You can do a lot more for him than I can, Esmeralda. Start by showing him a little gratitude for everything he's done for you. What do you say? Yes, you're right. No one has ever helped me like he has. Quasimodo, wake up! Oh! What's going on? Where am I? What is this? And what are those bells? Quasimodo, you can hear! And you're so handsome! Yes, you're right, Esmeralda. I can hear you perfectly. And I can also hear the birds in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lord, thank you. Thanks for your infinite goodness and wisdom. I haven't ruined the life of that young woman. Thank you for giving us all a second chance. Oh! <laughs> 
Shoo! A flock of doves happily ushers in a new day. While in the river, schools of colorful fish leap playfully out of the water. Good has triumphed over evil. Love has won the day. And today, our two happy couples will be joined in holy matrimony as the entire town waits to celebrate this joyful occasion with you. I have to admit, I'm happy and satisfied. <laughs> 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 <laughs>